I'd like to speak with you briefly about the concept of polymers. Now, whenever you see the prefix poly, it means many, means at least more than two, right? And if you think about your polyatomic molecules, your polyatomic molecules are your polyatomic ions or ions that were made up of more than two elements or more than one element. So polymers are long chain organic molecules. You can kind of think of a polymer as a chain, as a necklace, right? And if we look at this red necklace right here, this whole necklace is made up of smaller beads, all right? Now, there's a special name for these small individual beads that make up this necklace. Those are called monomers okay so the whole chain that is formed this whole red chain is a polymer and the small individual units that make it up are called monomers so polymers are long chain organic molecules which are made up of smaller individual units called monomers so mono one all right and then the poly would be many so if we think about the necklace This whole thing, this whole thing right here would be the polymer. But these individual units would be our monomers. All right. So the polymer is the long chain molecule that is formed. And the monomers are the small individual units that make up the polymer. Okay? Now, we have two different types of polymers that your CXC syllabus requires us to focus on. Alright? And um, the process by which... Polymers are formed is called polymerization. All right, so some vocabulary words there for you. Process by which polymers are formed is called polymerization. All right, so we have two types of polymers. And these are the types that your CXC syllabus requires that we look at. We have what is called addition polymers or polymers that are formed from addition polymerization. And you have condensation polymers or polymers that are formed from condensation polymerization. There are two, these are two separate um, groupings of polymers, two separate families of polymers. The small units that make them up, the monomers, are different, all right? Um, but they fall under the same heading of polymers. So, so for instance, addition polymers. These are formed from what 
what I call unsaturated monomers. And if you recall, the term unsaturated means that there is a carbon to carbon double bond in the molecule. All right. So when you have addition polymers being formed or polymers forming through addition polymerization, the monomers that are formed, the monomers that are, are used are usually alkenes. All right. Whether it's ethene, propene or some derivative of those, there must be a carbon to carbon double bond in the molecule. All right. And the other thing is that there's only one type of monomer. What do I mean by that? I mean that it's one type of molecule joining together over and over and over and over and over and over and over again to form the polymer. For condensation polymers, there are usually two types of monomers. All right. So two different monomers. All right. Um, when those monomers combine, a small molecule is usually removed or eliminated during the reaction. When we look at some examples of condensation, polymerization, what you're going to see is that small molecule, usually water, is formed during the reaction. Over here, with addition polymerization, there's only one type of monomer. <clears throat> the monomer is an alkene, so that means that it is an addition reaction that's taking place. So the only product of addition polymerization is the polymer. There's nothing else that is being formed apart from the polymer. With condensation polymerization, you have the polymer being formed in addition to some other type of, some other small molecule, whether water or ammonia, and um, the reaction that happens is usually called a condensation reaction. So in addition polymerization, the monomers combine through addition reactions and the only product of the reaction is the polymer. The addition polymers are also the simpler ones to grasp and the simpler ones to understand. Uh, condensation reactions. The monomers combine in a condensation or elimination reaction and multiple products are formed. Multiple products in the sense that the polymer is not the only thing that is produced.
over here with addition polymer is the only product condensation polymer is not the only product with addition polymers the monomers combine through an addition reaction because the monomers are unsaturated the monomers are alkenes all right with condensation you have two different types of monomers usually they have alcohol groups and acid groups or acid groups and amine groups right so two different functional groups on your monomers and that leads to um elimination or condensation reactions meaning that a small molecule is removed that small molecule is usually either water or ammonia for all the reactions that you have to look at for csec the molecule that is removed is primarily water just to give you an idea of what the whole polymerization process looks like and we get into it in a little bit more detail let's start out by looking at addition polymerization and um, let's look at the simplest one let's choose the simplest one to start with this is the formation of polyethene sometimes it's just called polythene kind of shorten it and abbreviate it so they call it polythene instead of polyethene okay so this is the process this is what happens so you have your ethene molecules and think about it you know that ethene is an alkene and you remember that whenever an alkene reacts alkene always reacts at the carbon carbon double bond all right so whether it was reacting with water reacting with hydrogen whatever the reaction always happens at the double bond so let's say we have these two ethene molecules when they react together what's going to happen is that the double bond here and the double bond there are going to break and we're going to end up with this molecule all right now let's say that we add a third ethene molecule then what happens is our, our chain grows by two more carbon atoms we add more ethene molecule chain grows more because what happens is the reaction is taking place at this carbon carbon double bond the bond is breaking and when the bond breaks a bond can form here and a bond can form there so if we add on another ethene molecule your molecule gets progressively larger and larger and as you can see the more ethene molecules you have the more ethene molecules you have the longer your chain will grow now in a typical polymer there are millions of molecules millions and millions of molecules being bonded together and there's no way that they would ever ask you to sit and draw the full structure of the molecule but what i want you to see is that as you have progressively more and more ethene molecules bonding together you get this long chain and what do you notice about this long chain in this chain there are no more double bonds so we're going from a situation where we have lots of carbon carbon double bonds all right we have lots of alkenes bonding together to a situation where now you have 
a very long chain alkane. All right. So one of the things about addition polymerization is that you start out with unsaturated monomers and you end up with a saturated polymer. You end up with an alkane for your polymer. Now, in an exam situation, the way you would show this formation is by using what is called the partial structure. So, what you have is you have your ethene molecule. And what we say is that there is a large n number of these ethene molecules. So that's why the N is there. The N is just there to represent some large number of these ethene molecules. Could be a hundred, could be a thousand, a hundred thousand, five million. There's some large number of ethene molecules. All right? And all those ethene molecules are going to join together just like we saw before. And when they join together, they're going to form a polymer that has a structure where this unit is repeated n number of times. So all these ethene molecules here are repeated over and over and over again and we end up with some polymer chain where this is repeated n number of times. So if there were a hundred of these then this would be repeated a hundred times. So you'd have another one of this right here, another one of this right here. That's the reason why you do the bracket and then the bond extends out of the bracket to show that another polymer unit, another um, section of the polymer unit is here. Another section of the polymer unit is also repeated on this side. So the band out on this side shows that the chain is also growing from here and also from here. So there's another band here and there's another band on that side. We call this the partial structure. We call this the partial structure. Because obviously it just shows a part of the structure. But it shows you the most important part of the structure because that is how the, 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 the polymer is going to look essentially without going to the extremes of having to draw out a hundred thousand molecules. All right. So this is ethene over here. And it has been converted to polyethene. Why is it polyethene? Because it is made up of many ethene molecules. All right. Also, even though we started out with an unsaturated um, monomer, the polymer ends up being saturated. The polymer ends up being an alkane. So why don't we call it polyethane? Because think about the naming convention. Poly is many. Did we make many? Did we start off with many ethane molecules? No, we didn't. We started out with many ethene molecules. So the way it the polymers are named is based on the monomer. So you have many of a particular kind of monomer. So you name your polymer based on your monomer. So ethene is the monomer 
and polyethene is the polymer. All right, this is the partial structure of polyethene. This is what they will ask you to draw in the exam. They can ask you to draw out the whole structure of it because that is not feasible. But what they will do is ask you to draw the partial structure for different addition polymers. Alright, so just so you remember, when you have addition polymerization, you start off with unsaturated monomer units and you end up with a saturated polymer. So your monomers have carbon carbon double bonds, but your polymer has no carbon carbon double bond. So you need to be able to draw well write this equation and draw the partial structure for a few different addition polymers you also need to be able to do the uses and know the uses for each of those addition polymers like polyethene polyethene is used to make plastics all right and most polymers are used to make some type of plastic like the polyethylene would be used to make like small lightweight plastics like plastic bags and um, plastic food containers and stuff like that So you have to be able to do you have to be able to write the partial structure for polyethene, which we just did, polypropene, um, polystyrene is essentially styrofoam um, polyvinyl chloride which is PVC um, I used to ask about polytetraethene which is um, Teflon but I may be mixing that up with CAPE all right, but these are the main ones. These are the main ones. All right, polypropene, polyethene, polystyrene, PVC, and Teflon. So these are the main addition polymers. These are the main addition polymers. And for each of them, we need to be able to uh, write the equation for their formation, like up here. Draw the partial structure for the polymer that is formed and also talk about what they are used to make for each of them. Alright, so in subsequent lessons, we'll look at some of these other addition polymers and then move to condensation polymers.